Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical and welcome back to another video. Today for you guys, I wanted to absolutely just pretty much nerdgasm about a detail in Kingdom Hearts 1 that has blown my mind. Something that I have only just recently found out about. Now, before we get into this, I'm sure that there's probably quite a few of you guys that know about this, and that is fine. Uh, but I, I wanted to make this video just because, for one, personally, I didn't know about this, and I, I'm hoping that there are at least a few people out there that didn't know about this either, so I can also blow your guys' mind too. Recently, I've been going back through Kingdom Hearts 1, really ever since making that fact video, as it's apparent that Kingdom Hearts 1 has the most amount of detail when it comes to little things, uh, specifically when looking towards its treasures, or of course just little things you can examine or just simply interact with within the environment. The level of attention to detail for like the small little things in Kingdom Hearts 1 is unlike any other Kingdom Hearts game that ended up releasing afterwards. And so I've been going back through a lot of the worlds, uh, essentially just kind of looking out for all of these different little things to jot down a sort of list, as I've been wanting to talk about Kingdom Hearts 1's level of detail detail for a specific video. Whilst actually doing so, while I was in Neverland, in the clock tower area, I came across this really strange little white light over one of the clock tower doors. I could examine the door, open it up, and I would receive a treasure. There's a little bit of text that comes up beforehand saying a certain time door has opened and you'll then receive the treasure. I was thinking to myself, wait, hold on, what? <laughs> Hang on a minute! I proceeded to then actually research this over on Game FAQs and got a full rundown as to exactly what this is, and my mind was simply blown. I've been playing Kingdom Hearts like a long, long, long time, and I did not know about this whatsoever. And there are a lot of cool little small things within KH1, but this would have to go down as the absolute coolest, and is the perfect, perfect, perfect example as to why Kingdom Hearts 1 has an unprecedented amount of little details in comparison to the rest. The clock face that is on the same side as the save point for the clock tower actually relates and is strung to the in-game time for the actual game. There are a total of 12 different doors that will open that will give you 12 different treasures. The small hand displaying the hour is going to correspond to what time door will open, and the actual minute hand of the clock corresponds to the exact minute within the hour that your in-game clock is currently on. Although this does not run in real time, as an example here we are 25 minutes into the current hour for my game time, and you'll notice that the minute hand is over 25. If I wait 5 minutes to get to the 30 minute mark on my in-game clock, and then back out of the world, go back into the world, you'll then notice that the minute hand on the clock tower is now on the 30 minute mark. Yeah. Yeah, I know, it, yeah, I, ju I just can't. This means for every hour that goes by for a total of 12 hours of in-game time, that's actual real life time by the way, a new door will be able to be opened and you will receive an item. What time door that you have opened and treasure that you've collected will actually be represented on the clock face. Here you can see that I've collected the 7 o'clock door treasure. Now the important thing to keep in mind here is, if you do miss out on an hour, it is going to take you a total of 12 hours to get back to that specific hour door treasure. So while collecting all 12 of these treasures over the course of 12 hours isn't actually required to obviously get 100% in Kingdom Hearts 1 or of course the Platinum, if you do want all 12 treasures, you are going to have to make sure that from the very hour that you start collecting these treasures at, let's say that you start off with the, uh, I don't know, 7 o'clock door, it means that for every single hour paying attention to the in-game clock, make sure to return to the clock tower. Now one thing to keep in mind here is if you have sealed the keyhole in Hollow Bastion, it means that the Phantom Boss is going to be in the Clock Tower area, meaning that you will actually have to defeat the Phantom Boss in order to gain access to being able to just explore the Clock Tower area. You will not be able to collect these treasures 
if of course the phantom boss is activated. So this means either clear the phantom boss if you have of course uh, sealed the hollow bastion keyhole or don't seal the hollow bastion keyhole, finish up all of these treasures and then proceed to do it. As I said before there's like this white light that is represented on what hour door that you have activated once you've actually opened it on the clock face. You might be wondering if you have all 12 is there anything special that ends up happening? And no unfortunately not. You just get this nice little sort of visual treat of 12 different white lights around the clock face. And just like how the change of the minute hand works, you will need to actually back out of the world and then re-enter the world when the next hour rolls over in order to claim the next hour prize. Here's the rewards list from game FAQs. The one hour reward is Orichalcum, the two hour reward is a power up, the three hour reward is Mithril Shard, and so on and so forth. But that's all I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, there's been a lot of discoveries in Kingdom Hearts 1 that personally I've come across years and years and years after the fact. That absolutely just blow my mind. The jungle slider for one, though I feel like that was sort of kind of obvious as that was actually uh, embedded into the mission section of the journal. I went years without knowing that was a thing. And also of course the uh, bubbles that you can actually freeze within Hollow Bastion I didn't know for the longest time either. It's these little things that are in Kingdom Hearts 1 that are for the most part missable and the game doesn't totally make them 100% obvious. Please in the comment section down below let me know if you guys actually knew about this or not. I'd be intrigued to know exactly how many people did and how many people didn't. However guys I'm cynical. Hopefully having a fantastic day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.